Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and there's a lot to think about when buying a new laptop. But if you give me a few minutes, uh, I'll run you through everything you need to know, and I'll also put some of my recommended favorite, mo mo I was gonna say monitors, favorite laptops uh, in the description below, and I'll keep updating it as well, because, well, new laptops come out all the time. And if you do enjoy this video, and wanna see more from me, then give me a thumbs up, tap that subscribe button. Uh, but let's jump straight in with tip number one, which is, well, be smart with your money. And as tempting as it may be, I would suggest probably not selling a kidney just to get the latest and greatest brand spanking new laptop because there's really no such thing as a fully future-proof laptop. New and better ones come out all the time. And sometimes you can get more bang for your buck if you go for last year's model. Although on the flip side, buying newer versions will mean it'll last a little bit longer before you need to upgrade. It's the classic really annoying tip of buy the best one you can for your budget. Uh, but really, what I would say is that most laptops are released in the first half of the year. Uh, so now actually, while there's plenty of good reasons to upgrade, there's some new hardware, uh, but it also means that last year's I guess that's 2020 now, isn't it? Uh, but last year's models will be discounted, or if you're willing to wait, then you can probably get some good discounts and deals on these new 2021 laptops around Black Friday and holiday season this year, although that still seems like a long way away. Okay, next question, and you probably already know the answer to this, but what kind of laptop do you want? Do you want a Windows 10 machine? Uh, do you want an Apple MacBook running Mac OS? Or do you want a Chromebook? You're probably just gonna stick to what you're used to using, but there are some good reasons that you may want to switch. Most laptops run Microsoft Windows 10, and it's a great option if you want a laptop that does everything and runs a massive range of software, and of course has the biggest library of games. There's literally hundreds, if not thousands, of Windows laptops to choose from, from basic to thin and light ultrabooks to proper gaming laptops. But then we've got Mac OS, and MacBook Air and Pro laptops make perfect sense if you're, say, an iPhone user, as it all works seamlessly with Apple's ecosystem, including iMessages and AirDrop and FaceTime. Mac OS also handles drivers and updates behind the scenes, making it just a little bit easier for non-techy people to use. It also helps that MacBooks are just lovely to use. I've got some notes on here right now. And actually this MacBook Pro 13 with the M1 chip, which I'll talk about in a second, I would say is my go-to laptop at the moment. But of course you will have to spend at least a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars for the MacBook Air to get that Mac OS experience. So yes, they are expensive, although they do hold their value longer than most Windows laptops. So if you come to sell in a couple of years, you'll get a bit more money back for your Mac. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Chromebooks. These are great if you just want a more basic laptop, something for browsing, watching movies, and doing office or schoolwork. Chromebooks are ideal for students, and they're usually cheaper than regular Windows laptops. The catch is that Chrome OS won't run Windows or Mac applications, but there are often versions of major apps in the Chrome Play Store. And also, most recent Chromebooks can run Android mobile apps and games. And most of the time with a Chromebook, you'll be working within the cloud. So there's Windows, there's Mac, there's Chromebooks, which I have somewhere laying around here. And then there's also the Linux operating system, but really that's for more advanced users who like to tinker. There's no right answer really, it's whatever you're more comfortable with and what kind of apps and programs you'll be using. Okay, tip number three. And as you may have heard, size matters, as does the shape actually. <laughs> Two-in-one hybrids offer more tablet-like experiences and versatility with detachable keyboards or 360 degree hinges, which means you can flip the screen round and then use it in a variety of different modes, including as a tablet. And then because they're touchscreens, you may want to use a stylus, which makes them great for illustrators and designers. Although two-in-ones tend to cost more and can sometimes come at the expense of battery life and performance. Then there's dual screen laptops. These are still quite rare, but we've got the likes of the Asus ZenBook Duos, which have this big second screen underneath, which helps with multitasking for say, having your Premiere Pro project files down there, or if you're gaming, uh, you could have your Discord or your Twitch stream. These are generally a lot more expensive, but if you could see yourself using it, then it may come in handy. However, most laptops come in this more traditional clamshell design, uh, and sizes range mainly from 13 to 17 inches. Uh, this is the Dell XPS 17, which is a pretty big uh, laptop, although of course, because of uh, recent design upgrades, the bezels are much thinner. So we're getting a 17 inch screen in what probably used to be a 16 inch kind of uh, overall chassis size. But generally the most popular sizes are 13, 14 and 15 inch laptops. Generally speaking, the smaller the screen, the lighter and more portable a laptop will be. However, bigger 15 or 17 inch laptops are more likely to have the option for more powerful processors and importantly, dedicated graphics cards. 
Alternatively, if you're thinking all these laptops feel a bit old fashioned and you want something really mobile, you could consider an iPad Air or an iPad Pro and pair it with one of Apple's magic keyboards. This is the Pro 13 inch. I'm actually using it as a uh, remote viewfinder for my camera so I can see uh, what the camera is seeing. So with this magic keyboard, you can just simply detach it and then use it as a tablet again, or just magnetically put it back on like that. And you've got this great keyboard with a separate USB-C port and a trackpad. It does get quite expensive. Uh, it's sort of in the same ballpark as a MacBook Air, but depending on how you use your laptop, this could be a better option. Although of course you're not gonna have any of those desktop applications uh, that you get on a Windows or Mac laptop. This is much more mobile oriented. Although while this is the Pro, I think if I were to buy this again myself, I would go for the iPad Air, the latest model, uh, and then the Magic Keyboard. It's a little bit more affordable that way. Okay, tip number four. And when it comes to the screen, we have to think about the resolution. And if you're a gamer, the refresh rate as well. The vast majority of laptops use a 1080p, aka Full HD resolution, and for nearly everyone, this is all you need. However, higher end laptops sometimes have 4K screen options, which are much sharper thanks to having four times as many pixels. And these are generally more color accurate as well, which is important if you're doing color sensitive work. But it's all a balance because while higher resolutions are great and they look sharper and generally have, as I say, better color accuracy, there is a trade-off when it comes to battery life and also performance. The last thing you want, unless you have a super duper powerful gaming laptop, is to have a 4K screen if you're gonna be playing games because it has such an impact on your frame rate. And on the flip side, if you're thinking about getting uh, maybe a productivity laptop and you're eyeing up a 4K screen, it'll probably halve, give or take, your battery life compared to the full HD version. So I think if portability or getting the highest frame rate possible is most important to you, then stick with full HD 1080p. I think Apple have a good balance because their resolutions, their retina screens are kind of halfway housed between Full HD and 4K. And on the flip side, if we look at gaming laptops, some of the brand new models for 2021, including this Asus ROG G15, now comes with a quad HD resolution. That's not something we've seen very often on laptops. It's kind of a good balance, 165 hertz refresh and quad HD. So you gain that sharpness and performance without having to go up to 4K, which just destroys everything. <laughs> oh, and the last thing when it comes to screens, that if I put these two together, uh, this is actually a 17 inch, this is a 15 inch laptop, but you may be able to notice uh, this is taller because uh, the most recent Dell XPSs and also uh, Apple's MacBook lineup and more and more laptops these days are coming with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio compared to the more traditional 16 by nine. Uh, but essentially with 16 by 10, you're getting just a little bit extra room uh, on the top and bottom. So especially when it comes to smaller, like 13, 14 inch laptops, I think it makes quite a big difference to just how claustrophobic it feels to use. 16 by 10 gives you noticeably more screen space Space. Okay, tip number five, let's talk about specs. Although I will be keeping this quite high level because I don't want to bore you to death. Although no promises. Let's keep things simple. And a good spec to aim for as an all rounder laptop would be one that comes with an Intel Core i5 or an AMD Ryzen 5 processor, eight gigs of RAM, 256 or 512 gigs of storage, a 1080p screen, and if you're doing more intensive graphical work or playing games, then maybe a dedicated graphics card. Let's dig a little bit deeper into CPUs or the processors. And what's funny is that until the last couple of years, most of the time I would have recommended an Intel chip in your laptop. But now with AMD's 4000 series chips last year and now their brand new 5000 series of processors, things have changed. And while Intel's 10th and most recent 11th gen uh, processors are fantastic and really, really good, in terms of just sheer performance, battery life, what we're seeing recently is a shift to AMD. They are kind of winning at the moment. So very high level, but I think if you are gonna buy a new laptop now or one from the last 12 months or so, I'd probably look for one with an AMD processor. But anyway, generally, the higher the number, the better. So an Intel i7 beats an i5, and a Ryzen 7 beats a Ryzen 5. Thanks mostly to higher clock speeds and maybe more core count. But then late last year, Apple entered the game with their own silicon. Uh, we've got the M1 chip in here, and it kind of blew everyone away. They released new MacBook Air and Pros with the M1 chip, which is basically a supercharged version of their iPhone mobile chip and it outperforms a lot of regular processors and improves battery life at the same time. It really is a big deal. I think if you are looking to buy a new Apple laptop, then I would definitely recommend the Air or the Pro with the M1. And if you're after a MacBook Pro 16, then I would hold out for the new ones coming soon. 
Now one question I get asked a lot is, should I go for the Air or the Pro? Well, I actually made a whole video all about that, which I'll link to at the end. But I think for 90% of people out there, I'd recommend going for the Air and the money that you save, I would then put in uh, upgrading the RAM or the storage. Okay, tip number seven, let's talk about graphics. Now, most laptops don't use a dedicated graphics card, instead relying on the integrated graphics built into the CPU. And these are absolutely fine for watching videos, some light photo editing, and maybe even basic gaming. Onboard graphics from both Intel and AMD have gotten much better, to the point where you can play a bit of Rainbow Six Siege, Overwatch, or League of Legends pretty well, even without a proper graphics card. Although these much faster integrated graphics are kind of limited to the most recent uh, generations of processors. So ideally you want 11th gen Intel or AMD 5000, although 10th gen Intel and AMD 4000 are still pretty good, but really newer the better when it comes to integrated graphics. But if you're really into your gaming, now is actually a great time to upgrade because we've got Nvidia's new RTX 3060, 3070 and 3080 laptop graphics cards and offer a big boost in performance. We're looking at 40 to 50% increases even over the previous RTX 2000 series. And so with these brand new laptops, we're getting that combination of new AMD processors and new Nvidia graphics cards in a system that's also got improved battery life, uh, better cooling, a little bit of a refined design. This top spec model, of course, will be very expensive, probably over over two grand, uh, but actually the new 3060 laptops start from about $1,000 or 1,100 pounds. So reasonably affordable actually, and a good deal more powerful than previous RTX 2060 laptops. But remember, don't expect quite the same performance from a laptop graphics card as a desktop because heat and power and chassis constraints all limited. Okay, number eight, and just a quick mention about RAM and storage. It's pretty straightforward. The more RAM you have, the more programs and browser tabs you can have open at once without it starting to chug or slow down. Eight gigabytes is absolutely fine for casual or office use, while gamers will benefit from having 16 gigs, but power users such as designers and editors can benefit from 32 or even 64 gigs of RAM, depending on how demanding your workload is. But generally I'd say eight gigabytes of RAM is absolutely fine, but if you can, just to make it a little bit more future-proof, uh, I would go with 16 if possible. As for storage, well, bigger drives means more room for your files, your photos, and your games. 256 gigs is fine and pretty standard, but I think 512 gigs means you won't have to worry so much about deleting things and uninstalling games to make room. But importantly, depending on what laptop you have and you're willing to double check this, uh, the chances are that the RAM and the storage will be the two uh, components that you could potentially upgrade yourself down the line. But it is a bit different for every laptop, so double check uh, if you are thinking about doing that. Okay, number nine, and just a quick word on IO, AKA connectivity. And there's really only one port that matters right now and going forward, and that's USB-C. Especially if it's USB-C that supports Thunderbolt 3 or the latest Thunderbolt 4 which are the fastest and most versatile types of Type-C port. Although with the very latest laptops now supporting USB 4, which still uses this Type-C connection, Thunderbolt's become a little bit less of a must have because you can basically do everything you need with USB 4. And a lot of laptops these days, including MacBooks, as you guys know, just have USB-C. So uh, if you do have an older USB-A peripheral, maybe it's a mouse or a dongle or something, then you'll probably need an adapter or you actually choose a laptop which has more ports. So for example, this G15, we have pretty much everything, full-size USB-A, HDMI's, Ethernet, and also USB-C as well. So the bigger the laptop, generally the more ports you have, but on thin and lights these days, you're most likely restricted to just USB-C and you may need to carry an adapter with you. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about battery life because in the pursuit of the perfect laptop, there's always this balance between performance and also screen resolution and battery life. But really it all comes down to the specs of the laptop, the more powerful, the less battery life you're gonna have and also the size of the battery. You also have to take the claimed battery life figures with a good old pinch of salt. These are often carried out in idealized conditions that aren't really that reflective of real world use. Things are getting better, or at least more realistic, uh, especially with uh, laptops under Intel's new Evo branding because they have to uh, give battery life figures based on more real world scenarios like uh, watching online video rather than local video playback. But generally speaking, if a laptop say says it'll have 12 hours of battery, I think you can probably expect maybe seven or eight. 
but we have seen some quite big leaps forward with the last couple of generations of hardware. Uh, so you can often now get 10, 12 hour battery lives from good laptops. But most impressive are the new MacBooks. I know I keep coming back to this, but the M1 chip is not only a lot faster, but can in some cases give you double the battery life that the equivalent Intel model could give you. So I think Intel and AMD have some catching up to do uh, to Apple's own silicon. So right now I'd say the MacBook Air and Pro are probably the best laptops uh, for battery life. And breathe. We did it. We made it to the end of the video. I do hope that was useful. Uh, as I say, if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments below and I'll also be putting my favorite and recommended laptops, which I'll keep updating in the description. Give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it and want to see more from me. And I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.